Hello, so this is my waveform sock and knitted in two colours and what I just wanted to show you today is the technique for picking up the stitches on the heel flap. Just going to zoom in a little bit so you can see hopefully more clearly. On the side of this sock I like this little garter stitch ridge and then stitches are picked up from here and I think it produces a really nice dense fabric with no holes in it. You can use a slip stitch edge if you prefer but I like this edge and I'm just going to show you how to pick up the stitches neatly. Okay let's get on to the sock I'm making. So here's my sock. I've knitted the leg and then I've done the heel flap and turned the heel and it's now time to pick up the stitches along the edge here of my heel flap. So we've got the working yarn here and we have 14 pairs of rows along our heel flap. We'll then pick up a 15th stitch from the gap between the heel flap and the stitches on the sock. So what I'm going to do is take my other needle that's currently attached to my sock and I'm going to start at the bottom of this heel flap and simply pick up this little garter bump all along the sock and I'm going to pick it up so that the next bump along is a dip. It doesn't really matter whether it's a raised or a dip but just make sure that for each stitch you pick up it's exactly the same. So all you're doing is just running your needle under that bump to pick up the stitch. And we do that all the way up to the top. Grab the last one and now I'm just going to check that I've got the right number of stitches. It should be 14, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 stitches. And now what we can do is simply turn our work to the right way round. We've got our working yarn with us here and just simply knit down these stitches. Now I like to knit into the front loop. You can sometimes find the back loop here but I like to actually, it feels a little bit twisted but I like that. I think it sort of tightens up any uh, sort of gaps in your sock there. You don't really want a gappy edge in your sock. You want it to be nice and firm and constructed. So it does feel a little bit like you're twisting the stitch because normally we would have a stitch mounted so that this is the leading edge, but we've got this leading edge. And so we're working into the front of the stitch there. And that helps keep that really nice and firm along the edge without being overly tight uh, because of course we don't want overly tight either. So I'm just finishing off my last stitch there. There we go. Now what we need to do is pick up one final stitch in this gap and I like to pick up and twist this top of this white stitch here. It's very easy to see when you're working with two colours. So I just slip my needle under that. For this pattern, this stitch is actually purled, not knitted. So I'm going to make that a purl stitch. So that is a purl stitch and that's our 15 stitches picked up along this edge. Then what we can do is work along our pattern row until we get to the other edge and here we're going to pick up a stitch but then we're going to change our yarn colour because we're working in two colours and we need to keep swapping the colours for a nice tidy finish. I'm just going to work across this row and I'll meet you when I get to the point where I need to pick up the stitches along the next edge. Now the first stitch that we want to pick up we want to pick up still in this white coloured yarn and that's because 
the stitch is actually going to form a little gap for the pattern just to make the pattern look really tidy at the edge before you get to the stripe section. I'll just show you here on the completed sock. So that little purl stitch that we picked up, the 15th stitch, produces this little gap so we get a tidy little gap on the pattern before we get to the stripe section of the foot. So that's why we're going to pick that stitch up in white yarn. So again, rather like before, I'm going to go in and find the stitch that I want to pick up. And in this case, I'm going to actually pick up this stitch here. Remember, we want this to be a purl stitch. So we are going to purl. It's a little bit tricky, but we're going to purl into the back loop so that it's purled and twisted for the start, just so that the gap is nice and tight. Then what we're going to do is we are going to take our yarn to the back of the work and we're going to pick up our red yarn. Now we need to make sure that in doing that that our yarns are going to cross over so that there's no gap. So what you want is for this white yarn to cross over the, the red yarn. Then we are going to pick up the stitches along this edge and we are going to be picking these up in the red yarn and the easiest way to do that is to work in the opposite direction as to we did before so choose what you're going to pick up so I'm going to pick up this bump here I'm going to zoom in a little bit for you I'm going to pick up this bump that is going in this direction just pop your needle under that and what you can see is it's just stay with the same bump all the way along just as we did last time so that the next bump along is always in the same direction and this makes a really nice tidy edge. If you feel you've got too much here in the sock in general what you'll find is that that flattens itself out a bit and isn't a problem but if you feel you haven't come quite far enough across in your stitches then you can go for the next bump along on the very very edge. It can be quite tricky to do that but actually I'm managing okay so I will in fact go for that one and then the, as long as I can get it. What you really don't want to do is change which bump you're picking up as you work along the edge because then it, it just doesn't look as tidy and I'm a bit particular about it looking tidy. So pick up the one that's easiest essentially. That's the bottom line. That one turns out to be too tricky. So there we go. I've picked the same stitch up long so you can see that the next stitch is to the right of the stitch that I've picked up. And let's just check, of course, before we move on, that we've got the right number, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. That's the correct number. So now let's work along those stitches with our red yarn. We are going to work into the front bump. Now on the first one, you've got to give it a little tug on your red yarn to make sure there's not lots of spare yarn in there. And also you can tug down on your white yarn just to make sure you haven't got lots of spare bits of yarn there because that just allows a hole to develop there when really it shouldn't just because you've left you know too much yarn between the stitches. So we're going to work across these stitches that we've picked up up until we get to the foot turning position. Now what I should have done and I've forgotten to do is to pop a marker in but well I'll do that on the next next round but if you can possibly remember then I would pop a marker in as you work up these stitches. Now some of you might be thinking oh but you've picked up with white stitches on one side and now you've got red stitches on the other side. 
I've done that because your working red yarn is already here and it saves breaking and rejoining it. The only other way to make it completely even is to have the change in the yarns here in the centre of the heel and that's much more visible in fact than having different stitches on each edge which you won't notice. So I'm going to count nine stitches across here, two, four, six, eight, nine, and that's the center of the heel for the lady's size. And that's going to become the new beginning of round, just for the time being. And the reason for that is that when we've got all our heel stitches on and our top of foot stitches, there's a lot of stitches that we need to work. And so, we can't just put all of the heel stitches on one and all of the foot stitches on another. If you're comfortable breaking the stitches up in a different way, then go ahead and do that, just as long as you maintain the proper pattern working. That's absolutely fine. So I've broken the stitches there for the magic loop, and then I'm also going to break them down here. When I mean break them, I'm going to just pull the loop out here. And I like to do that at a pattern repeat. I find that the most useful place to do it. So just in the middle of the foot there. And also, of course, if you have the same number of stitches on each needle, it does make your life easier when you're counting and checking that you're doing the correct decreases. So we've actually worked now pretty much one full round, not quite, because we haven't worked across these nine heel stitches. But now what you can see that we can do is we can now work down our, other, our heel edge and across in pattern in the correct colour. And what we'll be doing is changing colours every round at this side to work our decreases for our heel flap. Okay, I hope you found that useful. Happy knitting!